Good morning, church. How is everybody doing today? Hey, and happy Father's Day. Huh? Are you going to be having good time together as a family? Yeah? All right, friends, how is everybody doing? Great, great. I'm so happy to see you all. I feel a little nervous. Today it seems like nothing go my way properly. But hey, God is good. And we are looking forward to having great time together to worship our God. Amen? So I just want to say welcome. Friends, welcome to Memorial United Methodist Church, the greatest Methodist church in the world. And also, welcome friends who worship with us online, wherever you are. I pray that the Spirit of God is with you. Friends, we are here to worship our God. Let us be reverent. Let us be ready. Because, you know, we are here because we are so grateful for what God has done in our lives. His love, His mercy, His forgiveness is so good, and we want to make Him our our, our role model. We want to follow his teaching. And so I pray that today's service will teach you just that. I pray that today, after the service, you will feel encouraged. You'll be so energetic. You will go out and make this world a better place. Amen to that? And friends, I don't know if you remember anything today. If today's service is going great or today's service is not going so great, remember this, that I love you, that Jesus loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Amen to that? That should cover my ground, huh? So are you ready to worship? I would like to invite our acolytes. Do we have acolytes with us today? We have Emily and Elena ready to come down with the light of Christ. Friends, it's our tradition to bring the light of Christ into our worship service. Representing the Spirit of God is always with us. Helping us to remind ourselves that when we leave this place, the light of Christ will always be with us wherever we are. That we will go out and shine. We will go out and make this world a brighter place. So, without further ado, I would like to invite uh, uh, Sonny to come help us in time of worship. Sonny? Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Happy Father's Day to all the great fathers here. Um, call to worship. I'll do the leader part, and you do the people part in bold. God interrupted Sam- Samuel with an unexpected call. God surprised Jesse, choosing his youngest son, David, to be king. We join with Christ and are a part of God's new creation. Gather us in, O Holy One, for we would be your people. Amen. Our opening hymn is Blessed Assurance Hymn 369. Watching 
standing for the lost prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please remain standing if you are still able for our scripture reading, which is taken from Mark chapter 3, verse 20 through 35. Then Jesus entered a house, and again a crowd gathered, so that he and his disciples were, were not even able to eat. When his family heard about this, they went to, to take charge of him. For they said, he is out of, out of his mind. And the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, he is possessed by Beelzebub, by, by the prince of demons. He is deri he's driving out demons. So Jesus called them over to him and began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. If Satan opposes himself and he is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. In fact, no one can enter a strong man's house without first tying him up. Tying him up. Then he can plunder the strong man's house. Truly, I tell you, People can be forgiven for all their sins and every slander they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. They are guilty of an eternal sin. He said, to his, he said this because they were saying, He has an impure spirit. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my mother and my brothers? He asked. Then he looked at those seated in a, in a circle around him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. The word of God for the people of God. And you may be seated. You may be seated. I would like to invite our children to come up. Let's come to our children's time. Let's give them a big round of applause, friends. Wow, look at them. How is everybody doing today? Good, we have Haley, Emily, and Elena. Today is gonna be a great day, huh? Father's Day, what are you gonna do to celebrate Father's Day? What do you think? You know why we celebrate Father's Day? Why do we have Father's Day? What is so special about Father? What do you think? What does Sifu Lichai do? Nothing, huh? <laughs> Nothing to say. Oh, Sifu Lichai. Well, you know, um, in 1910, in 1910, um, a daughter decided to celebrate her father because her father was raising up six children by himself. And so when father died, the daughter decided to celebrate Father's Day, to, to honor fathers, to, 
to say thank you for what Father has done to them. You know, six kids, raising them up as the Father, feed them, teach them, guide them, and love them and protect them all the time, you know? And so that is why we, are, we take it very important here in June to celebrate Father's Day. And so now after this, maybe after church, you will spend time with your father. What do you think you will do to celebrate Father's Day? Does mom tell you what to do yet? I don't know what my kids will do with me. No, we don't know, we don't have a plan. Maybe barbecue, huh? Maybe take, take dad out to, to eat at a good restaurant that he likes, yeah? Maybe spend time with him, huh? Talk to him, how about that? Maybe write him a letter or something, right? Showing him how, how much you love him. Would you do that? What else do you think you would do? Say something, come on. I know you guys saying a lot, but why in, at church you don't say anything? Flowers. You give flowers to your dad. I know your dad will love it if you can buy a lot of flowers, give it to him, right? Buy him a beautiful bunch of roses and give it to him and say, Happy Father's Day. I think Sifu Lichai will like it. Yeah? Yeah, that would be good. What else? What else do you think you would do? Hmm? That was it? Help him, help him yeah, help him. What, what does father do when you want to help him? Maybe when he is mowing the lawn, right? You help mow the lawn with him, right? Maybe when he is barbecuing, you help him with uh, different stuff, right? Maybe help barbecue. Huh? Maybe serve him food, right? Help him do the, doing the dishes or something like that. Huh? What else? What else do you think you would do? You might do. Give him a call, right? Talk to him. Tell him how much you love him. How about that? Yeah? That's very good. That's very good. I'm so, so, so thankful that you all are here today. So thankful that you are here to spend time with our Heavenly Father, with our God. I hope that God, your Heavenly Father, continue to teach you, continue to guide you, continue to show you His love and His mercy as you continue to grow. You know, our God is our Father. You know, our God gave us life. And we want to also build a relationship with our God as well. Maybe you can help our God. Maybe you can help telling our God how much we love him, right? Maybe we can, maybe we can uh, spend time with our God through our prayer, through our scripture reading, right? And through time at church, focus on God and listen to God. Maybe God is speaking to you. Your heavenly father is just as important as your father that you have. Okay? Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we love you so much and thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us your children. Thank you for being our father. Lord, we pray that your love continue to be with our wonderful children here, Haley, Emily, and Elena. May your blessing continue to be with them, Lord. Help them to grow, raise them up in your love. Protect them, Lord, as they continue to grow. Show them what you want, them, uh, what you want for them. Show them what you have in store for them. Show them the future, Lord. Give them the, give them the strength and the energy and the wisdom and the encouragement that they all need so that they can grow to become the good and faithful disciples that you want them to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for coming. You may go back to your seat. Thank you. All right, friends, let's give them a big round of applause. How about we get up and go around and shake hands and say hi with one another? How about that? Let's do that.
and Chris scoot to the two uh, aisles in the middle. The, the two section here. All right, that looks good, that looks good. All right, let's go to God in time of prayer. Do we have any prayer of thanksgiving, prayer requests that you, you want to bring today? Let's, let's start with prayer of thanksgiving. Yes, Judy. Good, thank you. That's Nancy Unlow, right? That the thanksgiving, yeah, thank you for the test that came out clear and clean. Thank you. Anybody else? Prayer of thanksgiving. Yes, yes. Uh, the thrift shop donated $4,500 to the church, yeah, to the mission. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's very good, good news. Keep it up. Yeah, keep selling all the clothes, all the belongings, all the items. Anybody else? Yeah. Great time, yeah, that Janet could spend time with her brother, yeah, helping the, the, her daughter, his daughter to move, yeah. Thank you for your Father's Day that you spent with us. Thank you, thank you so much, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's my honor, I, I, love, I love to spend time with us all. Yeah, this, is, this should be my last Father's Day with you all, huh? Oh, that's sad. Yeah, yeah, I will try to come to visit, huh? Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, it's very nice to see Michael. And you know, look at the young people. They're growing up so fast. I remember when I first came three years ago, you all were smaller, younger, and, you know, less mature. Now you guys are, like, graduating from high school, going to college, you know, and do, doing big stuff, you know. You're going to become world changers very soon. That's great, guys. Yeah, like I said, I know five years later, I think most likely I will be, still be pastors, you know. And you guys, I mean, God has big plan for you, you know. The sky's the limit. Who knows? You will become engineers, doctors, teachers, you know, or workers or whatever, you know, that you want, you want your dream come through. Change your world. Change the world um, the way you are, who you are, and just keep building yourself up. That's amazing. I just can't wait to see how, how far you grow, you know. One day I go to the doctor and, you know, Dr. Yang, I know this kid before. Well, he's looking me now, you know, checking me and stuff. Yeah, that's great. Anybody else? We have, uh, we have um, a request from Julia, uh, Julie, and uh, this is to pray for Lucy's daughter, Susan, uh, who is in hospital with uh, bronchitis, uh, pneumonia. Bronchitis, pneumonia, see, like even double it up, you know, make it a little more complicated, yeah. Bronchitis, pneumonia. How can you have two at the same time, you know, bronchitis and pneumonia? Are they not supposed to be opposite? But, you know, yeah, bronchitis, pneumonia, yeah. Bronchial pneumonia, yeah, wow. Anybody else? Yeah, we'll pray for Susan. Susan is going through a lot, now she is having something else too. Anybody else? Yes. Sergio, I saw him outside just now, huh? Sergio is uh, uh, taking care of his wife who, who suffered from a stroke, and it's very difficult for Sergio. I guess it's difficult for, for the wife as well. Andy? So a car driving to Wesley uh, Church, sanctuary. I mean, that is, the sanctuary is like in the middle of the, the garden. How does a car go in there? Uh, wow. Yeah, we pray for the, the drivers, and the church is safe, so that, that's good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? All right, friends. Let's remember our friends and our loved ones. Remember our world. I invite you all to spend this time in, in prayer. You know, just be in the attitude of prayer. Go to God. Speak to Him. And, and just be in complete silence if you want to. Maybe it is this time when God is trying to speak to you. So I invite us all to close our eyes, bow our heads, breathe deeply and slowly, and spend time with God.
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord, we are here today to surrender our lives to you. Lord, we, we bow our heads, we close our eyes, we focus on your love, and just, we just want to say thank you for all the things you've done in our lives. Lord, thank you for having transformed us, transformed us to become a complete different person. Well, thank you for showing us how to live in the life of love. Lord, thank you for, for showing us the, the mission that you've given to us to go make disciples and baptize people and teaching them about the way of Christ to all people of all nations. Lord, most importantly, thank you for, for your sacrificial love. Because you die, we all are alive. Because, because of your blood, we all are saved. And then we just want to give it all to you, Lord, because you give it all to us. May our lives be filled with the purpose you've given to us. Lord, may this fellowship continue to grow, continue to cherish one another, to encourage one another so we can help shape each other to become more like you, to become the image that you have created us to be. And Lord, as we are sitting here, we remember our friends and our loved ones. We pray for Susan, Lord. May your healing power be with her be with the doctors and the nurses who are taking good care of Susan. We're praying for uh, Sergio, who is going through hard time, having to deal, help with his wife. We pray that his wife continue to recover well as well. Lord, we give you thanks that Nancy's uh, uh, result came out clear. Thank you that you continue to protect her. Lord, thank you for all the people who have been putting their time and their heart together to serve the Mission Thrift Store. May, may the contribution to the Mission Fund of the Mission Thrift Store become the tools of the gospel that it will bring the good news of Jesus Christ to the end of the world, that it will continue to transform this world, Lord. Lord, we're praying for this church as well. May your love continue to be with us. May your light continue to shine through us, Lord. May your energy continue to be with us, regardless. We pray that your spirit come. Help us, Lord. We pray that all the things that we do will glorify you, that nothing will stop us from building our relationship with you from growing in love with you, from being the people who, who, who has, who, from being the people whom you have called us to be, to go and make this world, to make this community even a better place. And Lord, may the word of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you because you are our rock and you are our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, Father's Day, huh? Father's Day. I, you know, I, I was thinking about Father's Day and how, how I'm going to incorporate today's scripture, you know, to, to Father's Day. But let, let me start with the Father's Day. Let's go to this picture. You know, I, I just want to show you a little picture about my, my father, how, look at that, how cute it is, right? With my little girl. Oh, so cute. You know, thinking about, about, about father, um, you know, my, my, my father, met my mom uh, in 1980. That is right after the killing field, right after the Pol Pot time. Remember when, when three years, eight months, 20 days, Cambodia was in a dark time, when nothing, no food to eat, uh, educated people were killed. Um, after the war, after 1979, everything was dark. So my, my father and my mother were going through it, right? And now after that, war after the, the, the uh, Khmer Rouge uh, uh, regime was in the jungle, 
mom and dad, you know, they were in their 20 years, uh, years. My dad was 30 years old. My mom was 27 years old. You know, they were uh, looking for each other, and now they met each other, and then they got married, and then they, you know, started their family. And I told you once that my, my family was, was, was like everybody else. We were very poor. We were growing up through this difficult time. And, and it was that one moment where that, that I continue to remember. It was in, I think, third grade when I came to dad and I said, dad, school needs some money, you know, maybe equivalent of $5 our, our time here uh, so that we can have end of school year's party. And, and dad pulled out his wallet, you know, and he opened up his wallet and I know that all he had was that $5. You know, he pulled it out, he looked at it, and I think in his head he thought, oh, I was thinking of doing something with this $5, but now I have to give it to my son, right, to go to school. And then he, he said something that always touched me. It's like, son, for your education, don't hesitate to ask, because I will do everything possible to make it happen. And he continued to do that, he continued to show that, how his support, continued to show his support to, to my family. And that's such a great example, you know, this is one of the many examples that I have through him. He continued to, to be with me, help me out in times of need. It's just a great thing to celebrate Father, you know. Now, I just want to turn to you, you know, let, let, let's spend time together. Remind ourselves or share the story of, of the sacrificial love, the fatherhood that our father did to us. Let's share it with one another. Let's hear it. What do you remember about your father, the good thing that your father did to you? He worked long hours for us. Your dad was working long hours for you, Mr. Ronald Smith. Yeah. Judy. Uh, Judy's dad was working underground in the hot rock mining. Yeah. Yeah. To make the living, to feed the family. Yeah. When that whistle would blow, that wasn't at the time of the ship coming around, you knew somebody was dying. When you hear the whistle blowing, you knew that somebody uh, had been buried under the ground because they were shifting and stuff. Yeah. Sacrificial love. Anybody else? Yes, you. Dad was a shaman. But he was the one who introduced you to Jesus, the precious gift for you. Yeah, the precious gift of life. Yeah. Anybody else? Yes, friend. Wow, so dad was an expert hunter, fisherman, brought home deers and, and, and fish all the time. That's good, trout and, yeah, thank you. Anybody else? Maybe, maybe if you dad, you can tell how sacrificial love you've shown to your children. Uh, Diane, were you saying something? Wow, so Ron's dad was a coal miner and was also running a film at night, so he didn't sleep at all, right? Yeah, go the day at work and come back home at night and work again, yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. Amen, amen. That's the father's dream. That's the father's dream. The father, Juice dad, was saying to her mom that uh, he wants his, uh, his daughter to be working in an office. And here you go, you know, such a, such a big dream, right? Yeah. Friend who was here with us online, you know, um, please write down in the comment, uh, what is it that, that you want to remember, the love that, that your father has, has given to you? The father figure that, that you really love, that you really admire and you want to remember it. Please write it down on the, in, in the comment. Yeah. That, that's father. You know, my dad, one thing that he, 
he, he mentioned was that he, he wanted to make sure that the children can grow out of poverty, that the children will get as much education as possible, that the children will be able to get life experience as much as possible, that the children will be able to protect themselves when hard time comes, when children, that, that he wanted children to be able to endure, to, to, to struggle, and, and to learn how to solve problems, when, when things happen, be, be, because again, remember Cambodia back then, life can change so fast. And the only way that you can help yourself is you get all the experience, you get all the, 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 the real life training so that you can go through hard times. I think how I could connect with this story is, is when Jesus, growing up in his family as a carpenter, Building his life, building his family, getting his job, getting his income as a carpenter, living in that area, and people were knowing him. But then he decided to change. Then did Jesus come out and go look for fishermen? Come, follow me. And, and these are shady fishermen. I don't know what they will be doing. I don't know what skill they have. And then Jesus would go to the tax collector. Hey, come, follow me. Change your life. Don't do taxing anymore. Come, follow me. What, what is all about? And Jesus would even go to the religious leaders too. Call them, come, follow me. And then Jesus would go to the, to the political zealot. Come, follow me. And he had 12 of them following him. And, and what is going on? He just stopped being the carpenter. He just changed his life. And then he would go around and teach people and call people to repent. The kingdom of God is near. Come now, follow me. You know, and he, he would be listening to this one guy, John the Baptist, who was kind of a little weirdo, you know, dressing up weird, you know. And then he'd come to the, the water and call people to, 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 to be baptized. And even Jesus himself walked into the water and be baptized by this guy, John. What's going on here? Jesus is it's, it's different. He dropped everything. Can you imagine? That sounds so cool to us because we know what it ended up, what Jesus in, un, 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 ended up, right? How Jesus ended up. But what if you were Mary? What if you were Joseph? What if you were Jesus' brother's Jane? Wait, What? All of a sudden, you just change everything, drop your income, and just become a complete different person? What is going on here? And now you get all these followers, right? What does the Bible say? Look at the scripture. If you go to the next slide. Then Jesus entered a house. I, I highlight the, the, the enter the house in red here because in some translations say, Jesus entered into the door. And, and again, a crowd gathered so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. And, 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 and enter to the house here, it means it's just the place that it is familiar to the people. Maybe it is his house. Maybe it is his follower's house. It was just a common place that everybody could go in. And he, and he was into that house. And a lot of people were following him. And, and, the, and the family were not very happy about it, don't you think? Look at what they say. Look at the next, ne ne the next slide. Oh, when, when his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him, for they said, he is out of his mind. What's going on with this guy? But all of a sudden, he just changed everything, dropped everything, and now losing this mission? Not, not just only his family who didn't like him, but even, even the religious leaders who were like, wait, 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 why are so many people following this guy, Jesus, now? And what, what is going to happen to their business, to their job, to their religious ceremony that they were leading, right? What does the religious leader say? And the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, he is possessed by the Bezebel. The Bezebel referred to the, the spirit of the, the Satan, Satan's spirit. By, by the prince of demons, he is driving out demons. Like, like when they saw Jesus driving out demons, they were thinking, wow, Jesus don't have the power from God. Jesus must have the power from the evil one. Even the religious leader didn't like 
how Jesus, what Jesus was doing. But I think Jesus was so committed to the mission that God has called him to do, to be, and to become. Jesus did not let other voices to change his mind. Jesus continued to focus, to be a part of the kingdom of God. You know, when I think about that, I think about all of us as we come together, sitting in this place, worshiping together. What are we doing? Why are we doing what we are doing? What is our mission? And that's why we come together and we wrote this mission statement down, right? We say we are here together to commit a harvest, our gifts, our skills, our talents, our treasure, to commit a harvest, whatever it is. Some of you might like hiking. Some of you might go, like to go abroad. But some of you might like to just clean inside a church. Some of you might just like to, to work with our youth. Some of you like to work with, with, with our sound system. Some of you like to sing. Still, you commit your heart was in whatever it is to show and tell God's love, to uplift our community. To just be it to share everything, to be together. Think about what you have contributed to the mission, to the life of this work. Some of you just want to come and pray. Pray for the life of the church. Some of you want to volunteer for the mission thrift store. Some of you go to the the, the boutique to sit together, to talk with one another, to, to encourage each other up and to build stuff so that you can sell, so that it can come to benefit the life of the church. I think that that's amazing. And thank you for all that you do. I, I, remember, I remember one time, I have, I have to tell you this story because I never told this story to anybody before. But, but remember, uh, a, few, a couple years back, we, had to, we, 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 we could put up the basketball court there. Right? We had the money enough to have people put the cement for us. Now, the basketball hoop itself, you know? I thought I could do it. So, you know, got the money, bought the basketball hoop. And two people should be able to do it. So, Sifu Lee Jai, Pastor Lee Jai, and I came together. And we were like, yeah, we are macho people. We can do this. Now, we didn't know how heavy that thing is. It's not just only heavy, but it's tall. It's high. And you probably you will have to make sure you follow all the instructions to make sure that nothing drops, you don't hurt yourself. Oh my, my. At that one moment, we look at each other up and we look at each other and we say, you almost die. You know that? But that thing was so tall. We had two, two ladders to get up. That thing was so heavy, and we were on that ladder hanging that thing up and trying to screw thing in the thing uh, you know, to the pole. It was so hard. And we were like, don't do this again late, late, next time. You know, hire the professional. They have the right equipment to do this. You know, you may be young, but you may be not smart, you know, to do this by yourself. You drop from that ladder and that board drop on you, you done, man. But, but I'm just thinking about committing the heart first, you know. He and I were like trying to do our best to make sure we have a basketball court so that the kids can play basketball in a secure area. You know, we're trying to solve the problem. Remember when we had this one movable uh, 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 basketball hoop and then it got moved into the youth house, in front of the youth, youth house, and then I saw kids were playing basketball and after church, you know, we have our church members would walk out with the walker and everything, and then the basketball rolling around. And I was like, that is not safe, right? And so that is why we were thinking about building that basketball hoop so the kids can enjoy it. My point here is just to commit a hard bus. What is it that you do? I encourage you to continue to do that. To do it 100%. Why do we do this? So that we can show and tell God's love and uplift our community. And if we can commit to our mission here, nothing will stop us from doing it. Just like what Jesus was doing, what he was doing. He was committed to the kingdom, to the great commission that God has given to him. And so even his family, even his, the religious leader could not stop him 
from doing the things that he was doing. Look, look at the next one, this video. So cool, huh? Committing the heart verse. Look at our youth. They even had the power washer. Jim donated it. Look at Boo. Blowing that car. Look at that. Isn't it so cool? Our church come together to commit a heart verse. To clean people's call, to raise some money, to go to our youth group that benefit our youth group. Isn't it so cool? And then while he was doing it, some distraction was going on. I said, no, your, your, your family come. Your family is coming after you. And he looked at them. And then he looked at those stated in a, seated in a circle around him and said, here are my mother and my brothers. The mother and the brother outside who are trying to stop me, don't worry about them yet. They will come in later. But as of right now, you know who my father and my brother and who my mother is? Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. Man, I don't know what Mary or James or the brother and sister of Jesus who was sitting outside calling Jesus to come out. I don't know what they think when Jesus would say, don't worry about them because they are, they're okay. As of right now, my mother, my brothers are here sitting with me. Those who are following God's will. And when Jesus is thinking about following God's will, Next slide. He's thinking about the Great Commission. He's thinking about go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And our United Methodists borrowed that statement saying what? Go make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Right? That's our mission statement. That's the things that we are doing together. Because when we are doing that together, even Mary, even the brother or the sister of Jesus who, will, who might feel very, very bad at that moment when Jesus kind of like saying goodbye to them. <laughs> Bye, mom. Not, not you right now. I'm talking about these mom, these brother and sister, right? I think, I think Mary was not very really happy. But then later on, the Bible also said in the book of Mark, in the book of Acts chapter 1, verse 12 to 14, the, the apostle, this is after the return, uh, after Jesus was uh, crucified, the apostle returned to, the, returned to Jerusalem. They went upstairs to the room, and they all joined together in prayer, along with the woman and Mary and the mother of Jesus and with his brothers. My point is here, they eventually come back together when they know the mission of Christ, when they know the mission that God has given to them the commission, the great commission that God has, has, has given to them. They were there doing it together. You know, fathers, right, we do things. We, we have our own mission statement, I guess. We have our own drive, why we're doing what we're doing, why we sacrifice our life, our time with our children, with our family. But then sometimes, let's admit it, we make mistakes, right? None of you is perfect, not me either, right? None of us is perfect, we make mistakes. We just gotta learn to say sorry to one another. We gotta learn and grow from it, from the mistake that we made. I've been with you for the last three years, and next week will be my last Sunday with you all. <clears throat> we will have a combined service. Uh, um, we will start at 11 o'clock, 10.30, we'll come here for a meeting, a little meeting, chart conference to approve um, uh, next year budget pastoral compensation. Um, then at 11 o'clock, we will have a combined service with our Hmong brother and sister and our English brother and sister. We come together, and after that, we go to our social hall to have dinner, uh, to have lunch, potluck together. Let's let make it big time, right? Let, 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 let give me a good farewell party, right? Lots and lots of good food, right? We're gonna have, uh, share a lot of joy together. We're gonna share a lot of hugs, you know, and maybe some tears, but that's okay, you know. You know, we will come to a time of ending. But, but my point here is, maybe some of you next, next week won't be able to make it be, be because of some, some good reason. I just wanna say that if you come next week, please receive or uh, forgive me next week, okay? But if you don't plan to come next week. I just want to say, I just want to apologize right now for whatever I've done 
in my last three years. I don't know the things that I've done. Maybe I've ha it has hurt you, it has hurt you. Maybe it has harmed you. Maybe it ha made you feel uh, uncomfortable or something. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to do it. I didn't do it intentionally. I probably did it unintentionally, right? Um, so, so forgive me. Um, I've been learning with you, growing with you, doing things with you, and life has been very good uh, so far, right? Just so let it. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, the, close that bracket. Next week we will have a real, uh, a real uh, service, you know, service of, you know, saying sorry and then you will forgive me and all that, right? Thank you. Anyway, let, yeah, I, yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I'm gonna relax. Next slide. That's good. Th this one is supposed to be a video. I, I like this video a lot because the, the video, it panned through the, the whole room and it showed all of us in one room together, having, having lunch together. I remember this gentleman, this gentleman, he, 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 he was our visitor. He came, he came to us and, and he, he felt comfortable sitting, sitting and eating with all of us. But, but go to the next video. The next video is also good too. thinking this is one of my most uh, memorable moment, you know? When, when we had that so many youth, there was almost 40 kids together, and they came together, and we was doing activity together, and we sing such songs, you know? And, you know, you just do everything to follow Jesus, and, you know, like when you call, I'll follow. What is better than that, you know? That is the mission that we're doing together to make disciples. These young people were able to come together and gather and sing and be safe in this wonderful environment to grow their faith. Talking about making disciples, that is real disciple making right there. That's why kids keep coming back and keep studying. That's why we want to do our, everything possible to make our environment safe for all these kids to come and enjoy their time together. And I pray that it will continue to, to, to grow. Our youth will continue to come back, you know, rekindle, commit ourselves to the life of the church together. What do I have for my next slides? I think I forget. Oh, this is another one. Oh, this is <clears throat> this is this a, a song that I was thinking of sing, singing, but well, that's okay. We don't have to sing it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Thank you, thank you so much, thank you. All right, let's do that. So, in summary, in conclusion, Jesus was not swayed by even then the family was calling him out. Even the religious leader who were trying to, to associate him with Bezebel, with the spirit of, of the evil one. But Jesus focused because he know what the great commission for him is, is to go make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And that's what we all are doing together. We make it a little more localized into our community context. We're saying we are, we are here together to commit our harvest, to commit our talent, our treasure, our time together so that we can show and tell God's love. That's important because God's love will transform life. It will uplift the community around us. So may this mission continue to be with you, continue to encourage you, continue to give you that power and that energy that you need so you will go forward, fulfill the mission that Christ has called you. Let's come together to the Lord's table because Jesus called his disciples to come together and when the dinner, before the dinner starts, Jesus 
took the bread, broke it, gave thanks to God, and gave it to the disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you so that you all are healed. After the dinner, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to God, gave it to the disciples and said, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many. Drink from this cup for the forgiveness of your sin. The blood of Christ shed on the cross so that you all are saved. Saved from your sin. You are perfect in sight of God. So let's come together to the Lord's table. The Lord's table is open to all. Everybody is welcome. And as you come to receive the body of Christ and the blood of Christ, I pray that you feel the energy from God. Please come. Once again, Lord, we give you thanks for all the things you've given to us. Thank you for your sacrificial love. Thank you for your forgiveness. Lord, may this Holy Communion remind us that you are always with us, that we are courageous to go and be the agent of love for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, now I invite you to, to give. Uh, our offering is... Uh, to, to support the, the mission and the ministry of our church. Uh, friends who worship with us online, I also invite you to give. You can simply go to our, our website or go to the QR code with your camera phone. It will lead you to the website that you can donate online as well. We have the offering plate next to the, the door. If you would like to drop your offering, you are welcome to do it over there. Please uh, say with me the Thanksgiving prayer. Loving Creator, Receive the gifts of our earthly resources and accept the gifts of our love. May these early treasures lead others to follow your path of care for all humanity. And we treasure, inspire us to be your incarnation in the world. Amen. If you're comfortably able, would you please stand for doxology?
words as you leave this place. I pray that you continue to say, Here I am, Lord. It is I, Lord. Send me, send me to this world to make this world a better place. God is good. And all the time. And this will conclude our service today, friends. I will see you all next week. God bless you.